What's up everyone? Welcome back to Mana Chamber. We're doing something crazy. We're doing something wild. We're going to be ranking every single legendary creature that could be a commander for like paper commander um, from the March of the Machines original release set. From the March of the Machines commanders set any legendary creatures with side inside of those commander decks from the multiverse legends that were cards within the march of the machines packs and from march of the machines the aftermath the little mini set that's all included in the march of the machines lore connected together they're going crazy there's so many of them so let's not waste too much more time and get into this Adeline, Resplendent Cathar. For two white and one, a human knight, asterisk four creature with vigilance. Her power is equal to the number of creatures you control. Whenever you attack, for each opponent, create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token that's tapped and attacking that player or a planeswalker they control. So her creating one ones for each, that's basically three if you're in a four player game of commander and you just have to attack. She doesn't even have to attack. Her power gets bigger, has vigilance. I think she's super cool, super fun. We're gonna go off the bat and give her an A as a commander. Agar, the freezing flame for a red and blue and one. He's a giant wizard, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess damage, if a giant wizard or spell you control dealt damage to it this turn, draw a card. So you're playing giants, you're playing wizards, you're casting spells. Drawing cards to do so, actually pretty nice thing. So giant wizard tribal and you're trying to do damage spells. Um, with the draw card mechanic, I think I'm giving this a B. I think it'd be a kind of fun commander to be able to play with. Alharu, Solemn Ritualist. One white and four. A human monk, 3-3. Three, three. When he enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two other target creatures. Whenever a non-token creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it dies, create a one, one white spirit creature token with flying. So you're gonna try to wanna put plus one counters on other creatures, or at least getting two one, one spirits. You could also do partner and get a partner with this. So who knows the possibilities you could go from there. Uh, he's actually pretty fun sounding and rejuvenative let's give him a B as well Anafenza Kintree Spirit for two white spirit soldier 2-2 two, two. whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control bolster one um so this one's kind of fun I had a historic brawl deck around this one um, it can be, I guess, maybe a little slower. You're just trying to get a bunch of creatures out, I guess. It's okay, is what I'm kind of feeling. I'm even, in fact, going probably all the way to D with Anafenza. A Rixmathese, Slumbering Isle, for one blue, one green, and two Kraken, 12-12. It enters the battlefield tapped with five, five slumber counters on it. As long as it has a slumber counter on it, it's a land. Whenever you cast a spell, you may remove a slumber counter from him. You can tap him to add a green and blue. So he's a four drop land that taps for two until you get rid of all his counters by playing spells, which can be pretty quick. And then he's a 12-12 big beefy boy big scary i actually think he's super cool and fun as a commander i mean you'd probably try to play something to remove his slumber counters if you could um 
And I mean, just a 12-12, big yikes. For four, I think we're going B on it. Arnie Metalbrow, a red and two. Human Berserker, three, three. Whenever a creature you control attacks or a creature enters a battlefield under your control attacking, you may pay a red and one. If you do, you may put a creature card with mana value less than that creature's mana value from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Okay, well, let me try this one more time. Whenever you control or a creature enters a battlefield under your control attacking. Okay, you can pay it, so you could do it m multiple times. If you do put a creature mana, so you could, wow. Okay, so you could just put quite, so if you had a bunch of ramp, you could throw out a bunch of creatures real fast. You'd need a bunch of draw on this deck. Sounds kind of fun. Not gonna say it's super impressive though, so we're gonna go see. Arvad the Cursed, a black and white and three vampire knight, three three, with death touch and life, lifelink, and other legendary creatures you control get plus two plus two, so you're gonna wanna put other legendary creatures in with him. He's just a, a good old boy buffing every other legendary boy. We're just gonna put him in a C category. It's even a little expensive, honestly. Not even go down to a D, honestly. Yeah, let's sit him in a D. Ariel, Knight of Windgrace, for a black and white and two. Human Knight, four, four with Vigilance. You can pay a white and two and tap him and create a two, two white knight creature token with Vigilance. You can play a black and tap him and tap X, untap knights. You control and destroy target creature with power X or less, where X is the number of tapped knights you have. So you're making knights, you're gonna wanna have knight tribal with it, just black and white knights. She's got vigilance, probably a little slow. It's not bad. We're just gonna throw it in D. Attracts a Praetor's voice for a black, a blue, a white, and green. Phyrexian angel horror, four, four, with flying, vigilance, death touch, lifelink, and at the beginning of your end step, proliferate. So what, you want maybe Planeswalkers, plus one counters, any other types of counters you can put on it. It's pretty cool. Um, it's kind of not even that expensive. We'll throw it in the B tier. Atris, Oracle of Half Truths. A black, a blue, and two. Human Advisor, three, two, with Menace. Whenever he enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a face-down pile and a face-up pile. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. He's actually pretty fun. You can get some pretty cool stuff going with him. I played him in Historic Brawl. I want to give him, like, a B, I think. Because of his just, like, ability to get cards, if you're, like bouncing him or returning him from the graveyard. He's just cool. Ariella, the war leader, for two white, two red, and two angel, three four, with flying, vigilance, and haste. Whenever she attacks for the first time each turn, untap all creatures you control. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. I get why she's six. She's actually super sick with a haste even. Gemini Crickenies. Uh, I think I'm gonna put this on B tier too. Even though it's so expensive, it's just like on top of all and another combat. Yeesh. Araya, first of Lockthwain for three black. Elf Noble. Two three. Whenever she or another black creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. You can tap her to sacrifice another black creature and draw a card. So you want a bunch of creatures. You want a bunch of creatures with cool, cool death triggers. Um, maybe reanimating them. Yeah, she's super fun. I love cards like this. Let's put her in B tier. Araya, Widow of the Realm. So for two black and one, Elf Noble 3-3, three, three, you can tap her to sacrifice another creature or artifact. 
She deals X damage to target opponent or battle, and you gain X life, or X is a sacrifice permanent. Main of value. So again, trying to do death triggers, trying to deal damage with death triggers using her abilities. You could do a Phyrexian red and five to transform her at sorcery speed into Araya, Araya Furnace Queen, a Phyrexian Elf Noble, 4-4. Four, four. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, return up to one target artifact or creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. So that's something you're doing if you're trying to end the game, basically, flipping her other over. Otherwise, you're sacking creatures trying to bing, 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 bonk. Game life. Um, kind of fun, honestly. The bing, 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 bonk, and then you got like a solid end game flip to start returning crazy stuff you've been sacrificing. Uh, let's go... Let's go B, I think. I think that just seems really fun. These A lot of these are Bs. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, Baral and Carrie Zev. Sure. Human. 2-4. First Strike and Menace. Whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, you may cast a spell with lesser mana value that shows a card type with it from your hand without paying its mana cost. If you don't, you create First Mate Ragabon, a legendary 2-1 red monkey pirate creature token, and it gains haste until the end of the turn. Um, so you're making Ragabon a lot. You're casting free spells a lot. It's pretty fun in all reality. I got nothing wrong with it. Let's go C. Baral, Chief of Compliance, a human wizard, 1-3. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one colorless red, or <laughs> one colorless less to cast. Whenever a spell or ability you control counters a spell, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. So I guess you're trying to counter people's stuff. Your counter queen over here. Uh, it's a blue and one, by the way, to cast this. I'm indifferent to it, I guess, if you're wanting to be control heavy. Um, the drawing and discarding is what's kind of weird. So, I mean, I guess you can draw in discard into cards that let you draw more and counter a whole bunch. Uh, I'm just gonna go D tier with this one, I think. Borborygmos and Fiddlebip, I think that's how you say it. I don't know, it's a tough one. For a red, a blue, a green, and two Cyclops, Homunculus, 6-5. Whenever they enter the battlefield or attack, draw a card. Then, you may discard any number of land cards. When you discard one or more cards this way, they deal twice that much damage to target creatures. So you discard one, you deal two, right? You can pay a blue and one and put them into their owner's library, third from the top. So like, retreat if you have to. And you could just cast it again to enter, to draw cards, to tax the, with the discards of the lands. You're gonna wanna return lands. I'm super indifferent to this. I feel like it's honestly kind of expensive, kind of slow. I think I'm going D with them for me bright palm soul awakener a white a green a red and one fox shaman four three with backup one whenever this creature attacks double the number of plus one counters on target creature that creature can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less this turn they're kind of fun i guess you're trying to have you're hoping your opponent has small creatures and you're like boofing your guys with counters it's like i'm super indifferent to this as well i think i'm gonna put it in the d category brimaz blight of oriskos let's try that one again brimaz blight of oriskos sure phyrexian cat three four Whenever you cast a Phyrexian creature or artifact creature spell, incubate X, where X is that spell's mana value. Okay. At the beginning of each end step, if a Phyrexian died under your control this turn, proliferate. Incubate X. So you have plus one counters on the incubates. When Phyrexians die, you get to proliferate 
casting Phyrexian creatures. Hmm, it's pretty awesome. I like this card a lot, actually. I, I've seen people want to make decks around this guy quite a bit. I think it's super dope. I'm putting this in A. This is an A for me. Bruticlad, Telcor, Engineer. For a red, a blue, and four. Phyrexian Artificer, four, four. Creature tokens you control have haste. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 2-1 blue Phyrexian Mire Artifact creature token. Then you may choose a token you control. If you do, each other token you control becomes a copy of that token. You can put some stupid cards in with this and make token copies of like any creature and have some crazy stuff and have all your Mires turn into that thing. It's pretty sick. Uh, he's super expensive. I think I'm just gonna throw him in C because his ability is just really kind of fun. Calyx, guided by fate for a white, a green, and one. Human Druid, 2-2. Two, two. He has a constellation. Whenever him or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Whenever him or an enchanted creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may create a token that's a copy of a non-legendary enchantment you control. Do this only once each turn. So you get free copies of enchantments, and enchantments are already scary. And whoosh, boy, and he's cheap on top of that. I think he goes into the A category, because he's just pretty sick. Captain Lannery Storm, a red and two human pirate, a 2-2 two -two with haste. Whenever he attacks, create a treasure token. Whenever you sacrifice a treasure, he gets plus one, plus zero until the end of the turn. Or she, I don't know. Anyway, um, she's very mediocre. I mean, you got to get her through quick. You're making treasures, which is nice. Super, in, like, indifferent. I think, man, I almost feel bad, but I think I'm putting this in F. I think this one's going F for me. Danitha, New Benalia's Light. A white and green and one. Human Knight. 2-2 two, two, with Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink. Once during each of your turns, you may cast an Aura Equipment spell from your graveyard. Okay, so you want Aura, you want Equipments. You're going to buff her up with her Vangel Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink. Super scary, honestly. Kind of, I think this would be a really fun commander. I'm going B for this commander. Daxos, Blessed by the Sun for 2 white, Demigod, a two and asterisk. His toughness is equal to your devotion to white. Whenever another creature you control enters a battlefield or dies, you gain a life. So you're gaining tons of life. You could probably do some super sick, super mean stuff. I'm kind of just like whatever with this. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a C. Dina, Soul Steeper. A green and black Dryad Druid for one and three. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. You can pay one, sacrifice another creature. She gets plus X plus zero until the end of the turn where X is a sacrifice to creature's power. Um, so she could be a big blocker, I guess. I don't know, they, they gain life and they lose life. I guess if you're trying to gain life in a bunch of different ways, that's probably the way you wanna go with this deck. It's kind of fun. I'm pretty like really indifferent to this though. We're going D. Jeru and Hazaret, a white and two red and two human god, 5-4. As long as one or fewer cards in hand, as long as you have one or fewer cards in hand, they have vigilance and haste. One or fewer cards in hand, so you don't want any cards in your hand. Whenever they attack, look at the top six cards of your library. You may exile a legendary creature card from among them. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Until the end of your turn, you may cast the Exile card without paying its mana cost. So you're getting free legendaries out with this guy. Pretty sick, honestly. Maybe you're even trying to discard cards to do cool stuff. Hmm, I'm pretty open with this. It's a little expensive. I think I'm going to go C for the possibilities. Drana. And Linvala, a black and two white and one vampire angel, three four with flying and vigilance. 
Activated abilities of creatures your opponents control can't be activated. They have all activated abilities of all creatures your opponents control. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate those abilities. This could be really, just honestly, truly insane. I'm really intrigued by this, but I don't know how it would go. So it's going C for me. All right. Uh, Elenda and Azor for a black, a blue, a white, and three. Vampire Knight Sphinx, 6-6. Six, six. Flying Ward 2. Whenever they attack, you may pay a black, a blue, a white, an X. And if you do, draw X cards. At the beginning of each end step, you may pay 4 life. If you do, create a number of 1 1 black vampire knight creature tokens with lifelink equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. So you're drawing at least 1 for 4, paying 4 life, creating. A 1-1 one, one lifelink vampire knight. It's super strange. I guess if you have tons of mana, this could be very nasty. I'm interested in the possibilities. For the expense, I think I'm going D. Elish Norn. Two white and two. Phyrexian Praetor. 3-5 with Vigilance. Whenever a source an opponent controls deals damage to you or a permanent you control, that source's controller loses two life unless they pay one colorless. For a white and two, you can sacrifice three other creatures, exile Elishnorn, then return it to the battlefield transform under its owner's control at sorcery speed, and it turns into the Argent Etchings, where at first it will incubate two five times, then transform all incubator tokens you control, and then creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain double strike until the end of the turn and then destroy all other permanents except for other artifacts lands and phyrexians exile the argent etchings then return to the battlefield i think this is super mean super oppressive you can do insanely terrible things with this and i love it here is an a for me on that and Elish Norn, Grand Cenobite for two white and five, Phyrexian Praetor for seven, Vigilance, other creatures you control get plus two plus two, creatures your opponents get control get minus two minus two, also super mean, also super oppressive, expensive though, so I'll put it in B for that reason. Emery, Lurker of the Lock, a blue and two, Merfolk Wizard, one, two, this spell costs one colorless less for each artifact you control. Whenever they enter the battlefield, meal four cards. You can tap it to choose an artifact card from your graveyard, and you may cast it this turn. So, um, you can basically play this card for like one blue every time from your command zone, as long as you have plenty of artifacts out, which you're getting artifacts from your graveyard too. I think they're actually really fun. Um, I think I'm just going to go C, though, because they're just kind of strange. Errant and Giada for a blue, a white, and one. Human Angel, 2-3 with Flash, Flying. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast spells with Flash or Flying from the top of your library. I think this is fun. Casting from the top of your library is actually pretty powerful. You can do some pretty just mean things with it, and Flash and Flying is mean. I want to say B with this, honestly. Itali, Primal Conqueror, for two red and five Elder Dinosaur, seven seven with Trample. When they enter the battlefield, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. You may cast any number of those spells this way without paying their mana cost. Yeah, it's insane. And then you can pay a Phyrexian Green and nine. So 10 total to turn it into a Tali Primal Cygnus, a Phyrexian Elder, Dinosaur 11-11 with Trample and Indestructible, and when it deals combat damage to a player, they get that many poison counters. It's just a dumb card, even with the expense, it goes in the A category, because it's just mean. Azuri, Claw of Progress, a blue, a green, and two, Phyrexian Elf Warrior 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under your control, you get an experience counter. 
At the beginning of combat on your turn, put X plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control, where X is the number of experience counters you have. So you're putting weak creatures out, trying to get a bunch of experience counters, and then boofing them up. Uh, he's actually kind of fun sounding. We're going to go C on him, though. Felden of the Third Path. For two red and one human artificer, two, three, you can pay a red and two and tap him and create a token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So you're turning creatures into artifacts for a quick minute. Um, he's kind of strange. I don't know how I feel about it. We're going to go do Fire Song and Sun Speaker. A white and red and four. Minotaur Cleric. Four, six. Red instant and sorcery spells you control have lifelink. Whenever a white instant or sorcery spell causes you to gain life, Fire Song and Sun Speaker deal three damage to target creature or player. So you want to gain life. Maybe even play red and white spells. And you want to do damage with your red. You want to gain life with your white. I like the thought. Let's go D for the like of the thought. Fersia, Judge of Valor. Two black and white and two angel cleric. Two four flying lifelink. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand and the rest in your graveyard. Um, so you're going to want a reanimator deck. Uh, you're going to want to draw a lot. Uh, I'm not sure on this either. We'll go D. Finn, the Fangbearer. A green and one human warrior. One three with death touch. Whenever a creature you control with death touch deals combat damage to a player, that player gets two poison counters. So you're just doing a bunch of death touch. It's honestly super scary. Very mean commander in my opinion. We're going to go A. Galta and Maverin for two white, two green, and three dinosaur vampire. 12, 12 with trample. Whenever you attack, choose one. Create a tapped and attacking XX green dinosaur creature token with trample where X is the greatest power among other attacking creatures. Or create X11 one, one white knight vampire creature tokens with lifelink where X is the number of other attacking creatures. So you're either going wide or you're going big with a deck. It's super fun. I love the idea. Very expensive. Let's go with C. Gimbal Gremlin Prodigy. A red, a blue, a green, and two. Gremlin Artificer 4-4. Four, four. Artifact creatures you control have trample. Wow. At the beginning of your end step, create a 0-0 red gremlin artifact creature token. Put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the number of differently named artifact tokens you control. Different artifact token. Differently named artifact tokens. So you're going to want to create artifact tokens. So you stuff like Dollhouse of Horrors and other things. I don't know. This thing's kind of nasty. I like the possibilities a lot. I think I want to put this guy in B for the possibilities. Glissa, Herald of Perdition, a green, a black, and three. Phyrexian Zombie Elf, three, five. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose one of these. Incubate two, twice. Transform all incubator tokens you control, or Phyrexians you control being first strike and death touch until the end of the turn. Uh, those are all fun. It's kind of slow. Super fun. I, I don't know. I'm mixed with it. We're going to go see. Goreclaw, Terror of Calcisma. A green and three. Bear. Four, three. Creature spells you cast with power four or greater. Cost two colorless less to cast. Whenever they attack, each creature you control with power four or greater gets plus one plus one against trample until the end of the turn. So you're gonna want to you're gonna be casting big boys, and you're gonna be casting for cheaper. I like the possibilities of this. I think it's super good actually. We're gonna go B. Goro Goro and Satoru for a red and black and blue. Goblin human three four. Whenever one or more creatures you control that enter the battlefield this turn deal combat damage to a player create a 5-5 red dragon spirit creature token with flying you can pay a red and one creatures you control gain haste until the end of the turn 
enter the battlefield this turn. So, so you're wanting things with haste. So that way you can make 5-5 five, five flying red dragon spirits. I don't know, I'm pretty indifferent to this. I think I'm going to go a D. Grim Grin, corpse born, a black and blue and three zombie warrior, 5-5. Five, five. When he enters the battlefield, or he enters the battlefield tapped and he doesn't untap during your untap step, you can sacrifice another creature to untap him and put a plus one plus one counter on him. Whenever he attacks, destroy creature defending player controls, then put a plus one plus one counter on him. So on first swing, he's basically automatically a 7-7, seven, seven, which is amazing. And then you can sacrifice like as many things as you want real fast and boof him up super quick. I, he's super sick. He's actually the first commander I ever made. I just love this guy. So he's going in A for me. Guy Ruda, Doom of Depths. Uh, black and blue, black and blue, and four. So, I'm sorry, I should say black or blue, black or blue, and four. There we go. Demon Kraken, six, six. With Companion, which we're not going to use, but your starting deck contains cards with only even mana values, this is what you will use. When he enters the battlefield, each player mills four cards, put a creature card with an even mana value from among the milled cards onto the battlefield under your control. He's kind of expensive. It's kind of slow. You're wanting to mill. I'm pretty indifferent to this guy in all reality, even though I have uh, made a historic brawl deck on him. Let's do D. Hey, Khan. Stromgald Scourge. Zombie Knight, 3-3. Three, three. You may cast him from your graveyard, but not from anywhere else. As long as he is on the battlefield, you may cast Knight Spells from your graveyard. When he dies, you lose two life. For a legendary creature, I don't think you could... Is there a way you can ever even cast him from your command zone? If you, if you can only cast him from your graveyard... I guess maybe you have some card that could put it into your hand from the command zone. There are a few like that. This is an F for a commander, my guy. Hamza, Guardian of Ration for a white, a green, and for Elephant Warrior 5-5. Five, five. This spell costs one colorless less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Creature spells you cast cost one colorless less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So he's super mean, you can actually make him super cheap. You're putting plus one counters on as many creatures as possible. You're making many creatures cheap as well. I think he's super excellent in my opinion. We're going A. Heliod, the Radiant Dawn, for two white and two god, four, four. When he enters the battlefield, return target enchantment card that isn't a god from your graveyard to your hand. For a Phyrexian blue and three, you can transform him at sorcery speed to Heliod, the Warped Eclipse. A Phyrexian God for six. You may cast spells as though they had flash, and spells you cast cost one colorless less to cast for each card your opponents have drawn this turn. So you're trying to make people draw, I guess. And then you can cast your stuff with flash. I don't know, I'm kind of really indifferent to this guy in all reality. I know some people love him for that backside. We're going to do D for me, Chief. Uh, Haitsugu and Kari, or Kari, a black and two blue and two ogre demon dragon, 5-4 with flying. When they enter the battlefield, draw three cards, then put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. So a brainstorm, right? Uh, whenever it dies, exile the top card of your library. Target opponent loses life equal to its mana value. If it's an instant or sorcery card, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. So you can maybe, you want it to die really fast, I guess, if you can even sack it. I don't know, I'm kind of it, pretty indifferent to this one too. I mean, the draw, the brainstorm once is nice. I think I'll just put it in C for that alone. Uh, Hirobi Death's Whale for two black and two spirit, four four with flying. Whenever a creature becomes a target of a spell or ability, destroy that creature. This is a super cheap way to just destroy everything on the field. He's kind of fun, kind of mindless. I think I'm going to give him a B. You just don't want to target your stuff. You're just targeting anything you can trying to swing through. It's interesting. Emotai Celebrant of Bounty for a blue, a green, and three. Naga Druid, 3-1 with 
Cascade. And spells you cast with mana value 6 or greater have Cascade. So you're trying to ramp, trying to cast big boys, trying to Cascade. It's a little expensive, but I mean, again, you're trying to ramp. You can do some crazy stuff with it. It's fun. Um, I think I'm going to put it in B for the fun side of it. Yeah. Inga and Essica. A blue and green and two human god. Four, four creatures you control have vigilance. And you can tap it to add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast creature spells. Whenever you cast a creature spell of three or more mana from creatures who spent to cast it, draw a card. So you're trying to get a bunch of creatures out. And they all have vigilance, which is super fun. And they can all basically be mana ramp. And I think I put this guy in B for all those abilities. If you play it right, you can do some sick stuff. Inga, Ruin Eyes, a blue and three, human wizard, three, three. Whenever they enter the battlefield, you scry three. Whenever they die, you draw three cards. If three or more creatures died this turn, so you're gonna wanna mass board wipe, I guess? I don't know, it's super weird to me. This one gives me F vibes, though. Gigantha, the Wellspring, a red or green and four elemental elk five five companion that doesn't matter no card in your starting deck has more than one of the same mana symbol and its mana cost one of the same so you're doing all multicolor spells hmm you can tap it and add one of all colors this mana can't be spent to pay generic mana costs um kind of crazy honestly an all colored deck on top of that. Uh, it can, you could do some crazy stuff. I'm indifferent to this, in my opinion. We're gonna go see, because I can't brain enough for this guy right now. All right, Jin Gataxis, Core Augur. For two blue and eight, Phyrexian Praetor, five four, with flash. At the beginning of combat, or at the beginning of your end step, draw seven cards. Each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by seven. Very expensive guy. Super advantage if you get him out. I think I'll throw him in C for the craziness of what he is. Jin Gataxis for two blue and three. Fire Axiom Praetor, five five. Ward two. Whenever you cast on creature spells with mana value three or greater, you can draw a card. Uh, for a blue and three, you can exile and return to the battlefield transformed under your control, activate only as a sorcery, and only if you have several more cards in your hand, flips into the Great Synthesis. You draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand, which is at least seven, so 14 minimum. You have no max hand size for as long as you control the Great Synthesis, so the next few turns, return all non Phyrexian creatures to their owner's hand. So you're going to want to have Phyrexian creatures in your deck. You may cast any number of spells from your hand without paying their mana cost, and then you exile this and return to the battlefield. So honestly, you don't even have to have Phyrexians out, because you're going to be able to cast them real fast. I think this is super mean too. Um, and then there's draw card on top of that. Ah, I think I'll go ahead and put him in the A category for just being wild. Jarena, Dauntless General, for a black and white human soldier, 2-2. Two, two. When they enter the battlefield, exile target player's graveyard. You can sacrifice them, and humans you control being hexproof and indestructible until the end of the turn. Um, so I guess you're trying to make a bunch of humans, and you can basically maybe get rid of some of the or do some graveyard hate. I don't know, this is like very whatever to me. It goes an F for me. Joriel voice of Zalfur for a blue, a green, and two human druid through three. At the beginning of combat on your turn, up to one target land you control becomes an XX green and blue bird creature token with flying and haste until the end of the turn, where X is the number of cards in your hand, and it's still a land. Whenever a land creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. So, you're trying to make your lands into creatures, you're trying to hurt with them. You're trying to draw cards. I like the idea. It's fun. Let's go see for the fun sounding of it. Josu Vess, Lich Knight, 
for two black and two zombie knight. Four or five with a kicker of a black and five. Menace. Whenever he enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create eight two two black zombie knight creature tokens with menace. So basically, if you cast him out, like with his big bad, he just makes a bunch of zombies. Like it's just super zombie deck. Very, very expensive. I'm whatever with this. I think I'm going F on this one, honestly. Judith, the Scourge Diva, a red and black on one. Uh, human Shaman, 2-2. Two, two. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, they deal one damage to any target. Um, this is actually a pretty mean card. Be probably better in the 99 than being the actual commander dies. You're gonna want a bunch of dudes to die real fast. I guess you're just swinging out quick. I don't know, I'm indifferent to it. It's cheap enough, we'll go see. Jury, master of the review for a red and black human shaman, 1-1. One, one. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one, plus one counter on him. Whenever he dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So at least one, but you're gonna wanna put sacrifice a bunch of permanents. Very indifferent to this too, we're gonna go D. Kahira, the Orphan Guard, for a white or green, white or green, and one, Cat Beast, three, two, with companion that doesn't matter, each creature card in your starting deck is a cat, elemental nightmare, dinosaur, or beast card, strange, vigilance, each other creature you control that's a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast, gets plus one, plus one, and has vigilance, so for three, and you're going to go tribal with all those things. You're doing plus one and plus one in Vigilance, which I think is pretty fun. A lot of interestingness here. I think we're just going to go see for the potential interesting Kality. Karn, Legacy Reforged. Five colorless Golem with asterisk asterisk. Basically, his power and toughness are equal to the greatest mana value among artifacts you control, which is at least five because Karn is out. At the beginning of your upkeep, Add a colorless mana for each artifact you control. This mana can't be spent to cast non artifact spells until the end of the turn. You don't lose mana as the steps and phases end. So you could just all the mana, all the way, all artifacts, all colorless. He seems very fun to me, honestly. I think I'll throw him in B for just the craziness that he can do in artifact colorless. Castla, the Broken Halo. A white and red and blue and three. Angel ally. 5-4 with Convoke. Flying Vigilance Haste. Whenever you cast another creature that has Convoke, scry two, then draw a card. You're going all Convoke. Maybe you're trying to make tokens with this. A little expensive, but the Convoke cheapens it. Scry and draw. I don't know. I think I'm going B with this. I think that sounds pretty dang good if you're going like Convoke. Tribal, basically. Catilda and Lear. For a blue and a white and a green, it's a human. 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast a human spell, target instant sorcery card in your graveyard game flashback until the end of the turn. The flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. So you gotta have a bunch of mana. I'm like really indifferent to this. Maybe people can explain to me why this is really good. I'm gonna go D for me. Kenrith, the return king for a white and four. Human noble, 5-5. Five, five. Pay a red. All creatures gain trample and haste until the end of the turn. Pay a green and one. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Pay a white and two. Target player gains five life. Put a blue and three. Target player draws a card. Pay a black and four. Put target creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control. He's just super fun. Most political commander. If you want to just play a fun magic game of politics and commander. I love this guy for his potentiality. I feel like I want to give him an A. An A for fun potential. I'm working on a deck right, him, right now for him in real life. But one of my most excited decks I'm looking forward to. Uh, Karuga, the Macro Sage for a blue or green and blue or green and three. Dinosaur Hippo 5-4, the companion that doesn't matter. Your starting deck contains only cards with mana value three or greater and lands. When they enter the battlefield, draw a card for each other permanent you control with mana value three. 
or greater. So you're basically trying to do three or greater. You're drawing cards. I'm whatever with this. It's gonna go see. Keskit, the flesh sculptor, for a black and two Phyrexian human artificer. One and three, he can tap, sacrifice three other artifacts and or creatures, look at the top three cards of your library, put two of them in your hand, and the other into your graveyard, and you have partner. He can do crazy stuff. If you want him to, you gotta have a lot out. For that, I'm putting him in D. Kiora, sovereign of the deep. A blue and green and three. Merfolk, noble. Four or five with vigilance and ward. Three. Whenever you cast a Kraken, Leviathan, Octopus, or Serpent spell from your hand, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is that spell's mana value. You may cast a spell with mana value less than X from among them without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So you're getting free cards that are cheaper than your Leviathans, your Octopuses, your Serpents, your Krakens, which are usually big cards. So you're doing a lot of free stuff. I think this would be pretty fun, actually, as a commander. You're just commanding big, horrible sea creatures. Uh, I want to lean towards B on this one. Kogla and Yudaro for two green, two red, and two ape dinosaur turtle. 7-7. Seven, seven. When they enter the battlefield, you choose one. It gains trample and haste until the end of the turn. Or it fights a target creature you don't control. You can pay a green and a red and two and discard them and destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. Shuffle them into your library from your graveyard, then draw a card. So, I don't know, they're kind of crazy. You could do trample your casting from command zone the first time. You're not going to get a discard them. So you'd want to return them to your hand if you're going to even do that ability. I don't know with this one. Honestly, I feel like I'm going F on that. Maybe tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, Krenko, 10 Street Kingpin for a red and two goblin. Whenever he attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Then create a number of one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to his power. So you're gonna wanna make him bigger. You're making more goblins by doing that. You're gonna wanna make him not die when he swings. Super indifferent to him. I think I'll just go D with him. Yeah. Kroxa and Kanoros for a black, a white, a red, and three. Elder Giant Dog 6-6 six, six, with Vigilance, Menace, and Lifelink. Whenever they enter the battlefield or attack, you exile five cards from your graveyard. When you do, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. I think as a commander, this seems super fun. Um, let me exile five cards. So you're going to want to mill. You're going straight to the battlefield. Honestly, as a commander, I think this guy would, could be pretty sick. We're going to have to put it in. In C, I think. It's just a little expensive to be higher. Uh, Croaks and Titan of Death's Hunger for a red and a black Elder Giant 6-6. Six, six. When he enters the battlefield, you sacrifice him unless he escaped. When he enters the battlefield or attacks, each opponent discards a card. Then each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way loses three life. For two red and two black, you exile five other cards for your graveyard to cast him for his escape cost. Um, I have a deck in real life of him. I think he's pretty fun. There's ulterior motives to the deck. For a 6-6, six, six, you're milling, you're discarding. You can do pretty cool stuff. I, I'm not going to say he's super special, though, so we're going to put him in, in C. Quende, Pride of Femoreth. For a white and three, human knight with double strike. Creatures you control with first strike have double strike. He's a 2-2. Two, two. Uh... I mean, you know, you're giving first strike guys double strike. The novelty's kind of fun. Uh, he's just like kind of strange too, though. I think we're just gonna put him, put him in D. Kaikar wins fury. 
a white, a red, a blue, and one bird wizard. 3-3 three, three with flying. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one light spirit creature token with flying. Sacrifice a spirit to add one red. Um, so you're casting non-creatures. You're making stuff. It's kind of fun. It costs four. I'm indifferent. I like that you can add mana. I think we're going to go with the C. Lathlil, the Bountless Dawn, or Bounteous Dawn, for a white and green and two unicorn, two two with lifelink at the beginning of each end step. If you gain life this turn, distribute up to that many plus one counters among any number of other target creatures. So you can just boof people up. It's cheap enough. As long as you gain life, which you're probably trying to do, I like this. Let's go ahead and put it in a B. Yeah, that's great. Luris of the Dream Bin for a black or white and black or white and one cat nightmare. 3 2. Companion that doesn't matter. Each permanent card in your starting deck has mana value 2 or less. Lifelink other creatures, or sorry, once during each of your turns, you may cast a permanent spell with mana value 2 or less from your graveyard. So, you know, it doesn't matter if things die, I guess, for you. Uh. I'm pretty indifferent to them, though. However, I think I'm going to go with C. Lutri, the Spell Chaser. For a two red or blue and one elemental otter. Three, two, with a companion that doesn't matter. Each non-land card in your starting deck has a different name, which, of course, in Commander would anyway. It has Flash. Whenever it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. So this is Banded Commander. I guess I don't understand why very much with this. So you gotta pay three to put it out. Then you're casting an instant sorcery spell you control. Um, but it has to also be on the stack, so you have to cast that too. I don't know, I get, I'm kinda confused by it. Maybe tell me why this is Banded Commander. Here's a D for me. Uh, Micaeus, the Lunark, for a white and X human cleric. Zero, zero. When he enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, you know, for what you spent, you can tap him to put a plus one plus one counter on him. You can tap him to remove a plus one plus one counter from him and put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control. So he's super boofy. I think he's super dope and fun and awesome, actually. And I want to say he's to the point where I think I'm going to give him an A he can just be crazy. Alright, Miora and Teshar for a black and a white and three. Phyrexian Spirit Bird, four five with flying. Whenever you cast a historic spell, return target non-land permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. If it would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. They're kind of crazy. Um... You're getting some mean stuff. You're casting historic spells, I guess. Maybe you're wanting to mill. I'm indifferent to this. We're going to do C. Nahiri, Forged in Fury for a white, a red, and four. Core Artificer, 5-4 with affinity for equipment. So you have a bunch of equipment out. She's cheap. Whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card. This turn, you may cast equipment spells without paying their mana cost. So get a bunch more equipment out. I don't know, she's kind of scary. She can be cheaper, which is nice. I think we're just gonna go C with her as well. Narset, Enlightened Exile for a white, a red, and blue, and one. Human Monk, three, four. Creatures you control have prowess. Whenever they attack, exile target non-creature, non-land card with mana value less than their power from a graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. So if you make her, so if she has prowess, yeah, you're doing some crazy stuff. I don't know, she seems super cool. I think we're gonna go B, because of all her potentiality. Nashi Moon's Legacy for a blue, a green, and a black rat shaman, three, four, menace, war, one. Whenever he attacks, exile up to one target legendary or rat card from your graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy. So you're just like, Casting legendaries and rats from your graveyard. I'm pretty whatever with this. I mean, I like casting from graveyard stuff. You 
gotta swing with it. Um, hmm. I think we're gonna go D. Nissa, resurgent animist for a green two L scout three three landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. Then, if this is the second time this ability resolved this turn, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an elf or elemental card. Put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So you're kind of drawing, you're getting elves and elementals. You're going to want to landfall a lot. I feel like as a as a card, I know this is expensive. As a commander alone, it's interesting. Um, I feel like for me, I think I will go ahead and throw it in the D tier. Niv-Mizzet Reborn for a green, a red, a black, a blue, and a white. Dragon Avatar 6-6 six, six with flying. Whenever they enter the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library. For each color pair, choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. Put the chosen cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So you want to have a bunch of Two colored spells. It's only when he enters. Maybe you're gonna wanna blink him back into existence. I don't know, I'm whatever with this guy, man. He's a D for me. Niv Mizzet Supreme for a green, a red, a black, a blue, a white, dragon avatar, five five. Flying hexproof from monocolored. Each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard, that's exactly two colors, has jump start. I need a refresher on that, you may cast that card from the graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying it's at the cost and then exile it. Hmm. So you're going to draw Hexproof and Monocolor. It's interesting. I'm also very whatever with this. Uh, we're going D with this as well. Obnixilis, Captive Kingbin for a red, a black, and two demon. 4-3 with flying and trample. Whenever one or more permanents each lose exactly one life, put a plus one plus one counter on Obnixilis, Captive Kingpin. Then exile the top card of your library until your next end step. You may play that card. Um, so he's a little bit of impulse draw. He gets a little bigger. He's got trample on flying, of course, which is scary. And he, you can do an infinite combo pretty quickly with all will be one. He's in my kind of whatever zone. I mean, he is good. As a commander alone, though, I feel like I just throw him in C tier. Obosh, the Prey Piercer, for two red or black and three Hellion Horror, three five, with the companion, that doesn't matter. Your starting deck contains only cards with odd mana values and land cards. And then if a source you control with odd mana value would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. I think that's pretty cool. You're going to try to go all odd mana, of course, if you're doing a commander with him. They're all doubling their power, basically, just with him being out. I think it's pretty good. We're going to go see. Omnath, Locus of All, for a green, a red, a Phyrexian black, a blue, and a white Phyrexian elemental for four. If you would lose unspent mana, that mana becomes black instead. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card if there, if it has three or more color mana symbols in its mana cost. If you do, add three mana in any combination of its colors and put it into your hand. If you don't, reveal it. Put it in your hand. Uh, again, kind of confusing, but I know it's crazy scary and can do pretty good stuff and you get mana ramp and draw I think so B Ortheon hero of lava brink a red and three human soldier three three with a red and one to tap him to create a token that's a copy of another target creature you control he gains haste you sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step you can only do this as a sorcery or pay three red and six and tap it and create five tokens that are copies of another target creature you control and they gain haste and you sacrifice them at your next end step and you activate this only as a sorcery so he can do some pretty game ending stuff for a lot of mana i'm super indifferent to him i think you're gonna want a guy that you're just swinging with hmm i feel like i'm going d with this guy 
Pia and Kieran Nalar for two red and two human artificer. Two two. When they enter the battlefield, create two one one colorless thopter artifact creature tokens with flying. You can pay a red and two, sacrifice an artifact, and they deal two damage to any target. So you're trying to make tons of artifacts, I guess. Trying to sack them. Super indifferent to this as well. We're going D. P and Nalar, Council of Revival. For a white and a red, human artificer, 2-3. Thopters you control have haste. Whenever you play a land from exile or cast a spell from exile, create a 1-1 one, one colorless thopter artifact. Creature token with flying. So you're trying to do stuff from exile. Trying to exile as much as you can to do it. And giving thopters haste and making thopters. It seems really fun. Um, I feel like with this you could do some crazy stuff. Playing from exile is the hard part, so I'll go C. Even though I wanted to go B. Clark and Nasserai for two red and three orc Efreet, five four. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non land card. An opponent chooses a non land card exiled this way. You may cast up to two spells from among the other cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. So they choose one and gets rid of it, and then you can cast something else. And then it's for free, and you're getting it for free, and I love it. And it's playing from their decks, and it's super fun sounding. Let's go be. Um, Pelucranos Reborn for three green, Hydra, four, five with reach, and Ephyrexian White and Six to transform at sorcery speed into Pelucranos. Pelucranos, Engine of Ruin, Phyrexian Hydra, 6-6 six, six, with Reach and Lifelink. Whenever him or another non-token Hydra you control dies, create three, a 3-3 three, three green and white Phyrexian Hydra token with Reach and one with Lifelink. Um, I think he's really sick. If people are saying, like, you know, you can cast Hydras there, a lot of times X spells, they cost zero, they come out with zero, they immediately die, turn it into two three threes. Sounds kind of sick. It's expensive for me though, so we're gonna go with, um, I think, even a D for me. Even a D. Quintorius Loremaster, a white and a red and three elephant cleric, three five with vigilance. At the beginning of your end step, exile target non creature, non land card from your graveyard, and create a three two red and white spirit creature token for a white and a red and three. You can tap him and sacrifice a spirit and choose a target card exiled with Contorius. You may cast that card this turn without paying its mana cost. If this spell would be put into its graveyard, put on the bottom of its owner's library instead. So it's like, your deck doesn't go away. You're casting from exile. You're making spirits. He seems super fun. Um, he's kind of slow. I'm going to put him in C for his fun potential slash slow potential. Uh, Rada, Coalition Warlord for a Red and two, Elf Warrior, three, three. They have a domain. When they become tapped, another target creature you control gets plus, plus, plus X, plus X until the end of the turn. Where X is the number of basic lands among land, land types among lands you control. So basically, there are only two, so they're only going to be getting plus two, plus two whenever they attack. I'm super whatever with this. We're going F. Like, it's not that great. Raph, Weatherlight, Stalwart for a blue and a white human wizard 1-3 whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell you may tap two untapped creatures you control if you do you draw the card you can pay two white and three and creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain vigilance until the end of the turn i think he's okay the draw is nice i think we're going c for the cheapness of the draw ragavon nimble Pilfer pilferer for a red monkey pirate 2-1 Whenever he deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token and exile the top card of your library until the end of your turn. You may cast that card. He has a dash for a red and one. Which means he gets haste, he returns to your hand, you know. Um, like, I don't really know how to feel about this guy. I mean, he's good. He's good early game. Great early game. As a commander, though, I feel like he could be fairly weak. You're going to want to get him around people if you can. Uh, for his cheapness and his first turn quickness, we're going to put him in C. Wrinkle and Torbran, two red and two black and one fairy dwarf for three, a uh, three, four flying first strike haste. Whenever they deal combat damage to a player or battle, choose any number. Each player creates a treasure token. 
Each player sacrifices a creature. If a source would deal damage to a player or battle this turn, it deals that much damage. Plus two instead. So you can just do a lot of damage with them. Flying for strike haste. I don't know, they're kind of fun. You're making treasures, you're making people. Sack, including yourself, so you're going to want to have stuff to sack. I don't know, it seems fun. Let's go see. For seems fun. Rashmi and Ragavan for a red, a blue, and a green, and one elf monkey, two, four. Whenever you cast your first spell during each of your turns, exile the top card of a target opponent's library and create a treasure token. Then you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost. If it's a spell with mana value less than the number of artifacts you control, if you don't cast it this way, you, you may cast it this turn. So if you have artifacts, you're paying it without mana cost. This is just so weird, but there's a lot of potential here. Uh, and you're doing it from, I don't know, I like this. I think I'm going B, because it just seems crazy weird and fun. Renata called to the hunt for two green and two. Demigod, uh, three, or asterisk and three. Her power is equal to your devotion of green. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one counter. I mean, she's good. There's definitely nothing wrong with her. Um, let's just go see. Yeah. Rayav, Master Smith. Four white and red. Dwarf Artisifer, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever a creature you control that's enchanted or crypt attacks, that creature gains double strike until the end of the turn. I think it's kind of fun. It's pretty cheap. Um... I did play this in Historic Brawl, and it was fun in that sense, so I'll put a C. Rishkar, Pima, Renegade, for a green and two elf druid. When they enter the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures, and then each creature you control with a counter on it has tap to add a green. It's a two, two. So you're, you're trying to put plus one counters on more things. You can make a bunch of mana that way. It's definitely not even as good, close to as good as like Inga and Asuka or anything. Um, I think I'll just put it in in C. Rocco Street Set Chef for a white, a green, and a red Elf Druid two four. At the beginning of your end step, each player exiles the top card of their library. Until your next end step, each player may play the card exi they exile this way. Whenever a player plays a land from exile or casts a spell from exile. You put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature and create a food token. I think this card's super fun. I've seen a lot of cool decks with it. Uh, you can do some pretty crazy mean stuff. I would actually like to give this card an A. Rona, Herald of Invasion, for one blue and one. Human Wizard, one three. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, untap her. You can tap her to draw a card and then discard a card. You can pay a Phyrexian Black and 5 to transform her at sorcery speed into Rona Talarian Obliterator, Phyrexian Wizard, 5-5 five, five with Trample. Whenever a source deals damage to her, that source's controller exiles a card from their hand at random. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield under your control. Otherwise, you may cast without paying its mana cost. This is crazy sick, honestly. Really scary. Um, pretty cheap. You can... <sighs> I don't know. I'm at a loss for words with it. I think I will go A for some of its capabilities. It's crazy capabilities. Rona, Shield Dreads Faithful for two black, a blue, and one human wizard, three, four. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, each opponent loses one life. You may cast her from your graveyard by discarding two cards in addition to a paying for her other costs. Um, I mean... Yeah, it's kind of cool. Pr very indifferent to it. I'm going D. Saint, Traft, and Rem, Karalus. For a white, a red, and blue. Spirit human, 3-4. Whenever they become tapped, create a 1-1 one, one red human creature token. If this is the first time this ability is resolved this turn. If this is the second time, create a 1-1 one, one blue spirit creature token with flying. If this is the third time, create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying whenever you cast a spell that has convoke untap them so you want a bunch of convoke you're trying to untap them you're making tokens seems very interesting i think i want to put it in c for the like interesting factor of it 
Yeah. Samut, Vizier of Nactaman. For a green and red and one, human warrior cleric, two, three, first strike, vigilance, and haste. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, if that creature entered the battlefield this turn, draw a card. Um, deals combat damage to a player if they enter the battlefield. So you're wanting to cast things with haste. You're trying to get around them. It's hard to get around. I mean, the first strike is nice. It's kind of hard to get around. I think I'm going to go D with this guy. Sarkon, Soul of Flame. For a red, a blue, and one. Human Shaman. Dragon spells... Or he's a 2-4. Dragon spells you cost. Cast one colorless less to cast. Whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, you may have him become a copy of it until the end of your turn, except its name is his name and he's a legendary in addition to his other types um so you don't want legendary dragons i'm assuming with this he sounds kind of fun like i'm open to him and he's making dragons cost less he sounds fun let's just go see for sounding fun sounds like my music stopped too so i'm gonna get back to recording this here in a second and crazy, we're back recording already. So, Ciazon, Perverter of Truth. Ugh. Four, two black and three. Demon Spirit, six, five. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses two life and draws two cards. So you're just making the game move forward straight into the bitter end of death. That's how a Perverter of Truth should do it. I don't know, I'm fascinated by this card. Let's put a C for me, just kind of sound, feeling fascinated about it. My cat is coming to say hello, she might be around. Shalai and Halar, a white, a green, a red, and one. Angel Elf, 3-3, three, three, with flying and vigilance. Whenever one or more plus one counters are put on a creature you control, they deal that much damage to target opponent. Um, so you're just doing tons of damage trying to put plus one counters on I know a bunch of people use this as like a plus one counter deck commander it seems pretty fun to me um, I think I'll throw it in B because it does sound very mean Shauna Sisei's legacy for a white and a green human warrior zero zero they can't be the target of abilities your opponents control they get plus one plus one for each creature you control so they can, they're basically a 1-1. One, one. Um, you're going to want a bunch of creatures out. I'm kind of indifferent to them. I mean, they can't do the target abilities, which is nice. So let's go D. Okay, Shield of Dread. Whispering 1 for 2 black and 5. Direxian Praetor 6-6 six, six with Swamp Walk. At the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. Uh, you get this out, I mean, it's pretty much game over. Try to give them a swamp on top of that. It's pretty mean. I love, the, it just sounds fun to me. I want to put it in, in C for its expense, but it sounds really fun. Shield Dread for two black and three. Phyrexian Praetor. 4-5 with Menace. When they enter the battlefield, each opponent vet sacrifices a non-token creature or planeswalker. You can pay black and 4, exile them, return the battlefield transformed at sorcery speed, and as long as an opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard, transforms into the true scriptures. For each opponent, destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker that player controls. Each opponent discards three cards, then mills three cards, and then put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control, exile this, and return it to the battlefield, and it becomes Shieldred again, where they're going to have to sacrifice things. I think this just, these cards are sick to me, these flip Praetors. So they're actually coming all the way up into the, we got to get them up here into the A category just keep moving on up here you go a tier for shield dread Sidar Jabari of Zalfur a black a blue a white and one human knight four three he has eminence 
whenever you attack with one or more knights. If he is in the command zone or the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Flying first strike, whenever he deals combat damage to a player, return a knight creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. I think he's sick. I know he's the commander of the knight deck. People like him a lot. With the eminence, though, he's got to go up into the A tier because he's crazy. He's a crazy dog. Sagarda, Fawn of Blessings, for a white, a green, and two, angel, four, four. With flying, other permanents, you control have hexproof. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast angels, spells, and human spells from the top card of your library. I think this is super sick. Other permanents having hexproof is even more insane to me. Um, I feel like I'm going to put this in B for just how insane it sounds. Could even be an A. But we're going B. Skithrix, the Blight Dragon, for two black and three. Phyrexian Dragon Skeleton, four, four. With flying, in fact, you can pay a black, give him haste, you can pay two black, and regenerate him. You can kill somebody super quick with him. Um, he's fast and mean, kind of fun. Uh, can be a little expensive. I'm gonna put him in C. Slimefoot and Squee, for a green, a red, and a black Fungus Goblin, three, three. Whenever they enter the battlefield or attack, create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. For a green, a red, a black, and one, you can sacrifice a sapperling, return sign, foot, and squee, and up to one other target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. You can only do this as a sorcery. Um, so you're trying to make sapperlings. They're just like a fungus goblin. They seem weird and fun. Um... I guess it depends upon what you bring it back. I don't know where I'm at with this. It's cheap enough. I don't know. I'm just going to throw it in the D tier. I don't know with it. My brain's not brain enough. Slurk, all ingesting, a green and five. Ooze, zero, zero, when he enters the battlefield with five plus one plus one counters on it. And then him or another creature. Whenever him or another creature I control dies, if I had a plus one counter on it, put a plus one counter on each other creature that has a plus one counter on it. So you're trying to do... Lots of plus ones. It's all green. It's kind of expensive, kind of slow. It does have partner. Let's put it in D. Squee, the immortal. For two red and one. Goblin, two one. You may cast Squee, the immortal, from your graveyard or from exile. So you can just keep him going. I don't know what you're doing with the deck. I kind of like him. I, I want to put him in C just because I kind of like him. Sram, senior edificer for a uh, white and one dwarf advisor two two whenever you cast an aura equipment or vehicle spell draw a card yeah that sounds fun with vehicles and maybe you getting some pilots auras and equipments you're just like mech mode equip you know just going all out uh and drawing cards that's what i think is interesting i think i'm gonna put them in b or he sounds pretty fun actually Serac and Goreclaw for two green and four. Human bear, six, five. Trample, other creatures you control have. Trample, whenever another, another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and it gains haste until the end of the turn. So those guys come out. It's pretty much game over. They're super mean. I want to go B because they just seem so fun. Seer Eleonora, the discerning for two blue and three. Human knight with asterisk and four. Her power is equal to the number of cards in your hand. When she enters the battlefield, you draw a card. When your opponents cast a spell that targets her, it costs two colorless more to cast. Um, if she had like first strike or something, I think she'd be pretty mean. I'm super indifferent to her. Almost to F tier. I feel like I'm gonna put her in F tier, honestly. But then you get Seer Conrad, the Grim, for two black and three, Human Knight, five, four. Whenever another creature dies or a creature is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, he does one damage to each opponent. You can pay a black and one and each player mills a card. He's the totally different than the other Seer, Eleonora there. I think he's super sick. Um, I want to throw him in B because he's just like nasty veracity. Tygum, Ojutai Master for a blue, a white, and two, Human Monk, three, four, instant sorcery, and dragon spells you control can be countered. 
Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand, if they attack this turn, that spell gains rebound, which rebound is at the beginning of your next upkeep, you may cast this card from exile without paying its main cost. Hmm. Okay, interesting. So you want to attack with it. They don't have flying, so you're going to want to make them unblockable. Or just shut your guys down with dragons. I don't know. Seems kind of difficult to pull off. Maybe, maybe not. I think I'm going to put it in C. Taziri, stalwart survival. Ugh. Let me say that again. Taziri, stalwart survivor. A white and two human warrior, three, three. Each creature you control has tap at one mana of any of this creature's colors. Spend this mana only to activate an ability of a creature. Activated ability of this creature has another activated ability. Oh, only activate only if it has another activated ability. So for Wooberg and Tap, you can mill five cards. Put all creature cards with activated abilities that aren't main abilities from among the milled cards into your hand. So you're just trying to get a bunch of creatures out with activated abilities. You're going to want a lot of ramp. It's five color. There's a lot of possibility here. It seems interesting and fun. I think I'm going to go with a C for like me being interested in it. Tetsuko Umazawa fugitive for a blue and one human rogue one three creatures who control with power or toughness one or less can't be blocked so you want a bunch of weak pathetic dudes swinging through honestly sounds kind of fun i'm gonna go see for pathetic uh Ta taisa carl taisa karloff sure a black and a white and two human advisor two four if a creature dying causes a triggered ability of an permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Creature tokens you control have vigilance and life links. You're wanting death triggers to go off multiple times, and then you want tokens. I know she can be, do some pretty mean stuff. I love it. it sounds fun. Let's go see here. Thalia and the Gitrog monster for a green, a black, a white, and one human frog horror. Four, four, first strike, death touch. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Creatures and non basic lands your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. Whenever they attack, sacrifice a creature or land, then draw a card. Um, I think they seem super fun and super sick, and you can do some crazy stuff with them. And I just want to give them an A for my like extreme interest in them. Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, for a white and one human soldier, two one with first strike. Non-creature spells cost one color, there's more to cast. You're trying to get a bunch of creatures. Um, I have a real life deck of this and it's actually pretty fun. She can be very mean in my opinion. Um, I think I'm gonna throw her in C though. The Locust God for a red, a blue, and four. He's a god, four, four, with flying. Whenever you draw a card, create a one, one, blue and red insect creature token with flying and haste. Uh, for a red and blue and two, draw a card, then discard a card. Whenever he dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So he's always coming back. Um, you're getting tons of insects. It kind of sounds really fun. I'm, I'm very interested in this guy. Uh, for his expense though, we're gonna put him in C. Timoret, chosen from death for two black, demigod, two, and asterisk. His toughness is equal to his devotion to black. For a black and one, exile up to two target cards from a graveyard. You gain life for each creature exiled this way. I mean, he, honestly, to me, he's super whatever. I'm going to put him in D tier. Or in D -tier. Tyvar, the Bellicoast, for a green, a black, and two, elf warrior, five, four. Whenever one or more elves you control attack, they gain death touch until the end of the turn. Each creature you control has, whenever a mana ability of this creature resolves, put a number of plus one counters on it equal to the amount of mana this creature produced. This ability triggers only once each turn, so you're trying to have elves that produce mana. You got death touch. I don't know, he seems really fun for like an elf deck in my opinion. I think I'm going to go C. Mori the Collector for two, black or green, and two, he's a news, four or five. 
companion that doesn't matter. Each and on land card in your starting deck shares a card type. As you mori the collector enters the battlefield, choose a card type. Spells you cast of the chosen type. Toss cost one colorless less to cast. He could be fun. Um, I mean, but I just feel like he's so whatever. Let's go D here. Urubrask, the hidden for two green and three. Phyrexian Praetor for four creatures you control have haste. Creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. I think he sounds super fun, honestly. Um, I want to just put him in B tier. Urubrask for two red and two. Phyrexian Praetor for four with first strike. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, he deals one damage to target opponent and you add a red for a red. You can exile him. Return to the battlefield, transform under his control. You can only do this at sorcery speed if you cast three more instant sorceries this turn. And he flips into the great work where he deals three damage to target opponent and each creature they control. And then you create three treasure tokens. And then until the end of your turn, you may cast instant sorcery spells from your graveyard. If a spell casts this way, but be cut in your graveyard, you exile it instead. Then you return to the, to the next side. I think he's like the worst of the flip enchantment uh, Praetors, I, I'm going to put him in B, because he could be pretty mean. Um, Valduck, Keeper of the Flame, for a red and two, Human Shaman, three, two, at the beginning of combat on your turn for each aura and equipment attached to him. Create a three, one, red, elemental creature token with Trample and Haste, and exile them at the beginning of the next end step. So you're going to want to put a, a bunch of stuff on him. Here, swinging a bunch of 3 1 tramples. Uh, he could be fun. I mean, he sounds really fun to me, so let's go see. Vona, Butcher of Magan, for a black, a white, and three. Vampire Knight, 4 4, with vigilance and life link. You can tap and pay seven life, destroy target, and all land permanent. Activate only during your turn. So you got instant destruction, you got life link, you got vigilance. Honestly, he sounds super mean. Let's go. B. Vornclex, Voice of Hunger, for two green and six. Phyrexian Praetor, seven six with Trample. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana of any type that land produced. Whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, that land doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Talk about some mean stuff there. Uh, I think this is super mean, super aggressive. I feel like because of its power, it actually belongs in B tier. Foreign Clex for two green and three. Fire Exune Praetor, 6-6 six, six, with Trample and Reach. When he enters the battlefield, you search your library for up to two forest cards. Reveal them, put them in your hand. Shuffle for two green and six. You exile and return to the battlefield transformed as the Grand Evolution. You mill ten cards. Put up to two creature cards from among them. Milled cards onto the battlefield. Distribute seven plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control. Then, until the end of your turn, creatures you control gain one colorless. This creature fights target creature, or pay one colorless. This creature fights target creature you don't control. Then you exile it and return to the battlefield. Look for more land. He's also one of the worst of the flip ones, I guess. Let's put him in in B tier as well. Yes. And Yargle and Multani. A, four, a frog spirit elemental for a green, two, black, and three. 18 6. Just redonkulous with the 18 6. We gotta go see because of that. Yargle, Glutton of Urborg for a black and four. Frog spirit. 9 3. Like Yargle and Multani, just not nearly as ridiculous. Let's go. D. Yarok, yeah, Yarok the Desecrator for a blue, a green, a black, and two elemental horror. 3 5 with death touch and lifelink. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a trigger ability of an permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Um, so you're getting double enter the battlefield triggers. Death touch, lifelink, elemental horror, cost 5. You can do some mean stuff with it. Um, I like the death touch lifelink with it. Uh, the possibilities are there. Let's go see for possibilities. Yadora, Grave Gardener, for a green and four. Tree Folk Druid, 5-5. Five, five. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, 
you may return it to the battlefield face down under its owner's control. Uh, it's a forest land. So you're getting land for people dying. It's kind of interesting. You could play some big mean spells with it. I think I'm going to go C. Because it seems like it has a lot of potential. Yorion Sky Nomad for 2 Blue or White and 3 Bird Serpent for 5 The Companion That Doesn't Matter. Your starting deck contains at least 20 cards, more than the minimum deck size, which you definitely can't even do in Commander. Flying when this enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non lane permanents you own or control them, return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of your next end step. It's only on entry. Honestly, I think they're kind of weak. Let's just go D. Zada, Hedron Grinder, for a red and three. Goblin Ally, three, three. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery card that targets only Zada, copy that spell for each other creature you control. That, the spell could target each copy targets a different one of those creatures. So you target him with one thing to beef him up, you're beefing up all your other boys. A lot of potential there. I'm gonna go C. Zamona Dina for a blue, a green, a black, human dryad, 3-4. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, target player loses two life and you gain two top life. You can tap it to sack another creature. Draw a card, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you control eight or more lands, repeat this process once. Um, so you can draw two with that. Draw your second spell. You can be doing that a lot. You're going to want to be sacking. I think they seem fun. Um, I'm going to put them as C tier. Zerda, the Dawn Waker, for two white or red and one elemental fox through three. The companion that doesn't matter, each permanent card in your starting deck has an activated ability. Um, abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cost two colorless less to activate. This effect can't reduce the mana in the cost that's less than one mana. You can pay one to tap it, target creature can't block this turn. Um, so you're gonna want a bunch of mana abilities. Uh, it's kinda cheap. You could potentially do a lot with this, honestly. I think because of the cost reduction. If you're going that route, I think I'll give it a B. I think I will. And then Zergo Energy Tie for a white, a red, a blue, and two Orc Dragon, 4-4 four, four with Flying Haste. When they enter the battlefield, they have Hexproof, as long as, you know, they entered. Uh, whenever one or more dragons you control, deal combat damage to a player or battle. Look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them in your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. You may return one of the chosen dragons to your hand. Uh, so you, you can retreat, you can just swing, you can get cards you need in your hand. It's flying in haste, it's a little expensive, but you can do a lot with it. I do believe I want to give it a rating when my mouse wants to agree with me. We're getting load struggles going on. Holy guacamole. And finally, we're gonna give it a C. This is the final chart. F's to A's. You can't even see them all in one go. There's so many of these things. Looks like I put mostly C's. Um, what do you think? Am I super wrong? Am I super right? Okay. And let's go pick out the worst card. I already know. It's this Hakon guy. I'm sorry, but not being able to cast him other than from your graveyard when he's a legendary creature specifically as your commander is the worst possible thing you could have as a commander out of the guys that you could have gotten from these marshal machine commander cards um the best one though hmm kind of a tough choice there's some pretty mean boys up in here that can do some crazy we're Donkey Kong things. When I think about it, the furthest, when I think about it in Commander, for cheapness and everything, I know in my Mythic Rares, I put Jin Kataxis. Um, after looking at it, there's this like Rona 
Harold Shepard or whatever its name is. That's also super mean. Rocco Street Chef can do stupid stuff. Kenrith seems like extremely fun, but he's so expensive. Grim Grin has special place in my heart. Elish Norn could hurt a lot of people, especially as your commander. Uh, it's so hard to know what's right. I think if I was going to pick one of these boys out of all of these boys, though, I'm going to stick with my gut on my Mythic Rares and do Jin Kataxis. Because what a game ender if you get that flipped. I mean, that's how the other flips are. But this one just gives you so many possibilities. And I like blue. So I guess that's the way I'm going to rank it. Maybe I'll make... You know, maybe I regret this decision already. I don't know. Why don't you tell me what your favorite commander in the March of the Machines and all extended sets around March of the Machine is? Do you have a worse commander? Something you're never going to play with? Um, thanks for stopping by. Really appreciate you listening to this entire video. It was ridiculously long. I can't believe how many commanders between the March of the Machine sets there are. Lord of the Rings sets right around the way. Getting pretty excited for that. Uh, thanks again for stopping by to Mana Chamber today. I would love if you would subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. If you like this video, that really helps the channel out. I couldn't appreciate it more. And, you know, talk to me. I'm bored. Later on.